Uh, a lot to talk to him about because this has been a wild off season, and for him it's been a pretty good one, I would say, as he uh, makes his way into our homemade studios here. Tyrese, congratulations as he left me hanging there as I had the fist out for him, but that's all right, no big deal. How's the summer been so far? Like, this is all gravy. You get the contract, you get the deal. Let's kind of talk uh, between the lines, though. What's the summer been like as far as basketball has gone for you? Yeah, it's been great. It's been great. I mean, honestly, it, it was kind of difficult for me because um, at the beginning of it, um, Rich and a lot of people was like, listen, we need you to stay off your feet, you know, contract-wise. You don't need any freaky, like, freak accidents to happen, so could you just do us a favor and stay as far away from the gym as you possibly can? I'm like, listen, I can't do that, but I can promise you that I won't do any, like, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, different things like that. I'll just do some spot shooting and lift weights. But now that I'm able to, like, ramp it back up, it's been great, honestly. Like, I, I've been working pretty hard and uh, having some fun while doing it. I know you were watching, I talked to you earlier about it, watching a lot of the summer league and seeing those guys. And a guy like Ricky Council, did you saw up close, a guy that's trying to make it in this league to mm -hmm. really show out and perform. What does that say to you about what he's going to be for this team? Yeah, I'm extremely proud of Ricky. You know, I kind of talked to him, like, right before summer league. I was up here and he was working out a little bit like right after I got done working out. And I just asked him, like, who do you want to be in this league? Like, you got to know that. Those mm -hmm. are the things you got to know. Who do you want to be? Who you need to watch? Who do you want to, like, you know, have, like, I know everybody has their own player accounts, but who are you on a team, a championship caliber team that's going to help, you know, win it mm -hmm. and actually going out here and produce. And, you know, once you figure that out, I think you have, you know, the sky's the limit for you because, you know, you work hard, you play hard, you're not scared, um, you know, you have – the attitude of uh, someone who's going to go out there and be determined. I mean, uh, determined. So uh, I'm proud of him, man. He, he, I think he did a really good job of, of leading the team and you know, just going out there performing at a high level. It's interesting you say that. You say to him, who do you want to be? Who did you want to be? And what if he said Tyrese Maxey? What if you hear, like, these rookies coming <laughs> into the league yeah, and Maxie. they say, hey, who do you want to be in this league? They don't say, like, Harden or anybody like that. They go, yeah, Tyrese, Tyrese Maxey. I think Jared McCain does want to be Tyrese. Yeah, it could be. Who did you want to be? Um, I wanted to be Tyrese Maxey. Yeah. No, I, I mean, but honestly, I, I had to do so many different things. Honestly, like, like my second year, I had to kind of fill in for for Ben. You know, before he before he got traded, then we bring in James. I had to kind of change my role to more being off the ball. I had to learn that, and then now I had to come back to being on the ball and kind of just being like, you know, a primary ball handler. Uh, you know, a second co star to to Joel Embiid. So, I, I you know I had a I had a different path. A lot of guys, but um, you know, I just worked extremely hard to to find ways to be to do everything. You know what I'm saying? A little bit of everything. Like now, like I mean, last year I knew I had to. Okay, I didn't know if James was coming back or not. Mm -hmm. I knew it would be a possibility that you know he'd get traded or he wouldn't be here. So I was like heavy working on like passing greeds and knowing how to pass, knowing how to get guys the ball because you know that was gonna be my job. I had to find a way to get you know the best player in the world the ball without him. With him staying happy, you know what I mean? <laughs> he wants to walk every play, but I got to keep, you know, everybody else happy, get other guys going as well. So I had to learn that. And, uh, you know, and once, you, once you learn who you want to be and who you want to be in this league, the sky's the limit. I mean, that's, that's one of the biggest things, like finding your role, finding your niche, and then going after it and being successful in it. You talked about you had a different path. You know, at 21 you were taken, uh, obviously a lottery pick by many standards, and now I think that's come to fruition but you had such an emotional reaction to it on draft night. And you thank the Sixers, and you thanked them, obviously, today as well. And then you come in, and you're the rookie, and you know you don't get a lot of playing time. You're trying to find your role. And then now you see here as this max player. And I know you're a guy that works so hard. I love the story that you told about your dad just right. making you watch all this stuff. And he's obviously been a big influence, as I know your mom has well. Did you ever envision getting to this point right now so early on in your career? You know, it, it's funny because, like, when I was in eighth grade, I had a science teacher. And, like, I think it was the, the first day of the, of the second semester. And, like, she, you know, she, you know, when you're in, in middle school, they make you say, okay, what do you want to be when you mm -hmm. grow up? What do you want to do this? And what's your plan A? What's your plan B? What's your plan C? And on my plan A, wrote, you know, I'm going to go to the NBA. On my plan B, it was going to be, it was make sure plan A works. <laughs> and, 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 and plan C was like, uh, listen, I'm going to be in the NBA. Like, there's, there's too many plans, but I, I know I'm going to do this. And uh, she was, uh, like, one of my biggest supporters about it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Most most people say, like, okay, well, if you don't do the NBA, what are you going to do? You know, but honestly, I say all this to say it's just, like, I had a vision. I had a vision. I told her, I was like, listen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to high school. I'm going to be a McDonald's All-American. I'm going to try to win state. I'm going to go to Kentucky. 
play here at Kentucky. I'm a good NBA. I'm be you know All Star, All NBA caliber player, and I'm gonna try to you know be the best possible version of myself. And uh, when you say those things, you know, as a what 14, 13 year old, mm-hmm. she was looking at me like, okay, listen here, okay, you're going a little far. <laughs> but I was like, I, I believe in myself. She's like, well, if you believe in yourself, then you go out there and do it. So she used to come to all my high school games. Um, she kept in touch with me, you know, throughout college. So I appreciate her for just believing me. So that's just a quick story on that. Checked all those boxes. That's right. Tyrese, you talk about your role, your niche, all that stuff, and, and like how it's changed. Does it change again? Now you have a Paul George coming in. You have a different team than you had last year. Are you who you are and everything else has to change, or is that role, the niche that you talk about, does that change? Man, a little bit of both. I think I've kind of solidified myself in this role for a little bit. Honestly, that's number one. And then number two is like, we're all going to have to change our games. We're all going to have to uh, compromise. We're all going to have to figure it out. And uh, that's what the training camp and all the stuff before training camp and all the stuff before the actual season starts is going to be for figuring out how we want to play, how we want to play, when we're going to play with certain ways, who we're going to play with rotation. I know Coach Norris probably has an idea already of that. But uh, once we figure that out, then we'll be able to hit the ground rolling, honestly. But I think, you know, right now, I think I've, I've kind of solidified of where how I'm going to play, you know what I mean, like those different things. So we'll, we'll figure it out from there. Do you prefer on ball or off ball? It doesn't really matter to me now because, like, when you have a guy like Joel, mm-hmm. he can bring the ball up. He's always going to he's going to have the ball in his hands a lot, so you're going to be off the ball a lot. But you're also I'm also able to uh, play in second units yeah. and kind of lead second units. And uh, even when Joel needs me to be on the ball and, and create for himself and, and myself as well and others, uh, I can do that too now as well. So I just like whatever's going to help us win games, like whatever's mm-hmm. working for us in those games. That's why I you know I work extremely hard to be able to do. Like a lot of different things, play on the ball, play off the ball. Uh, sometimes I can be a decoy in the corner because I feel like I shoot the ball well. Mm-hmm. So a lot of those different things are going to help us be successful. Shoot the ball well, 41%. Yeah, that's, that's not too bad. At, at your guys' gala last year, Marcus Morris and I were talking, and he said the two, the hardest thing he ever had to do on a basketball court was cover Joel Embiid. The easiest thing he's ever done on a basketball court is play with Joel Embiid. What's the difference for you when you're on the court with him and when you're not on the court with him? Well, I think Marcus Morris is right. That, that's uh, probably a lot of guys in this league uh, 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 answer. But uh, my thing is, it's like a mindset thing, you know. When I, I like last year, like when we were rolling, like really, really rolling, I, I really feel like I had it down. I really feel like I had like you know, playing with Joel down, playing without Joel down because I knew when I was in there with him, like early, I got to get him going. I want him to be successful. I want him to see the ball go through the net because we're gonna need that. And I knew, like, I will be able to come back in and play with second units. I could be more aggressive, and I could kind of go get myself going and, you know, get my teammates involved as well. So, I, and then when he went out, it was kind of – I had to learn. It was like four or five games where I had to learn, like, man, all the defensive attention was on me. It was the trapping, the boxing ones, and everything was, you know, catered to myself. So I had to figure it out how to play with that. And then once I kind of got towards the end of the year, I really figured it out, like, hey, manipulating the game, get my teammates involved, when I need to be aggressive, when I don't need to be aggressive. So – now it's just kind of another step of figuring it out with Paul George, with the rotation will be like. And it's going to take some time, of course, because it's all new to us. We've got almost a whole new roster. And, uh, you know, Daryl and, and Josh and everybody, AB, they've done a great job of, of constructing the roster. And now we just have to go out there and execute it. How much are you watching? I'm sure you are. Team USA and everything that they're doing. I know you're obviously you've trained a lot with LeBron over the years out there in L.A. He's clearly playing at the he is the longest prime of anybody I've ever seen in my entire right. life. It's truly remarkable. But then you see Joel Embiid having that experience as well. I think it's going to be good for Joe, honestly. I mean, that's just a, a situation where you're playing. Like, I don't think he's ever played in, like, USA before. Mm-hmm. So it's like when I was younger, I did. I played on the USA team, and, like, all these guys are coming from different AAU teams and different high school teams, and they're the best player in the high school mm-hmm. team. So we had to figure out how to sacrifice who's going to, like, put, put each other in roles and – Who's going to shoot these shots? Who's going to shoot those shots? What are you going to do? How are you going to impact the game? And uh, it'd be good for him because, like, mm-hmm. it's, it's a different setting. It's a way different setting. And he's, you know, buying into his role and he's doing different things out there. But I think he's finally starting to figure out, where, you know, how to play, how he's going to play with that team. And um, it's been great. So I'm, I'm happy for him. I watch him all the time. I just kind of laugh. Last game, he, he dunked the ball. <laughs> so, and I said, Which you never see. Listen, I said, listen here, man. Be careful out there. <laughs> no, <laughs> he went through people too yeah, on that. Yeah, yeah. He did. yeah so. so I like that. That's nice. Yeah, Tyrese, this this fan base adores you, as you well know, and they love your game. Most improved player, All Star, all of those things. What difference could you say to them that they may see in you this coming season that they haven't seen before, if there is one? 
or I mean, two? It's a few differences. Um, I'm not going to tell all my secrets yet, but uh, I think it would be great. <laughs> it would be great. I think for me, one thing I can tell the fans is, one, I appreciate them, and two, what you know about me is I'm always going to always see, you know, my weaknesses. I always I'm, – I'm aware of them. So I know what I need to get better at as soon as the season ends. Like, I, I keep track of it all the way through, like, the season. And then once the season I know what I need to work on. I know what I need to add to my game. So I'm always aware of that. And I'm very, um, you know, open to, to, to doing those things, to um, doing different things, to be able to come out the next year and, and have things added to my game because it's important. I feel like it's extremely important. You can't get complacent. You can't get complacent. You can't get um, – like it can get the same redundant every single single time every single summer, but if you add things to your game, it, it keeps it fun. Well, listen, we can't thank you enough for joining us for a little bit. Congratulations on the extension. Yes, you make this it. city joyous, yes. and that's I, I mean that as a person, as a player, and we are so happy what we do to have you here, and so is this city. Congratulations. I appreciate y'all having me. Thank you so All much. All right, Tyrese Maxey with us.